Hello everybody, guess what? It's not a Mondeo today. Now I'm at car sales, we've got something a little bit different. And there's this particular problem here. It's a 2006 Volkswagen Turan 2 litre TDI. And it's been a pain in the ass, to say the least. So anyway, I'll just run you through the problem with this. Uh, the main thing I'm going to talk about, I'll talk about in a minute, but there was a little problem I had to start with. Anyway, what I'll do is, we bought this car and it's going to go up for sale and be sold. But the, the previous owner told us it's got an electrical problem and they couldn't be bothered to sort it out. So they sold the car to us. So what we done was, we drove the car up the road. What happens is, you're driving along normally and all of a sudden, the engine management light and the glow plug light will come on simultaneously and in the middle of the dash you've got like a little red display and it will say emissions workshop sort of thing, you know what I mean. So we get it back, I plug the old scanner in. Unfortunately I didn't take a picture of the original codes. I've got two of them but the, the first one which was engine speed sensor. I didn't get the code for that. But regardless of that, I decided because of the engine speed sensor I thought right crankshaft sensor. I'll stick a new crankshaft sensor in just to make sure and check the wiring while I'm at it. Uh, this, was the, this was the annoyance of it all because if anybody knows how to change a crankshaft sensor on a TDI Turan you're probably laughing your bloody head off at me already because they are a shit flipping job to do as I found out and I ended up having to remove the entire oil filter housing assembly and oil cooler off the bloody engine. Although I didn't disconnect the cooling hoses for the oil cooler, I was able to push that out the way. But even with the oil filter housing completely unbolted, because it completely covers the actual flipping sensor, you can't get to it. But anyway, you need a, four, a long four mil Allen key with a ball head on it to then get into the bloody block, because the sensor's buried in the block, you need that long allen key to get in there and you have to go by feel because you can't see it with your hand up there sort of thing. So annoying. And I got the allen key onto the screw and it wouldn't turn. It was so flipping tight and I kept trying and trying and eventually it, it went but it's, it, it rounded off the head in the little bolt, didn't it? So I'm thinking, oh my God, this couldn't get any worse. I'm going to end up flipping, taking the gearbox out and trying to bloody get this, this little screw out. So what we've done in the end, I know it's a bit wrong, <laughs> but I had, to get a, uh, I had to get one of them little die grinders and just die grind away a bit of the engine block where the allen key goes in and I got a straight allen key bit and managed to get it into the screw and tap it a little bit and eventually with a bit of trickery and prying about it went, it, it clicked free and I thought oh my god Thank God, really, yeah, I was starting to lose my shit over this. It was such a pain in the ass. But it come out, put a new sensor in it, drove it back up the road for 20 miles I drove this Turan, and it was faultless. It drives absolutely beautiful. No engine lights, no nothing. So I get back here, drive around the yard, then I go down the other garage and I come back here, and after I'd switched the ignition off a few to on and off a few times, all of a sudden the engine light pinged back on. Now, what I didn't say to start with, there were three fault codes. One was engine speed sensor. When I connected this scanner back up to check the codes, the engine speed sensor code had gone. And that was coming on quite regularly, so I know the crankshaft sensor had cured that problem. Now I know I've got multiple problems on this car. The other two codes, which I'm, I will show you in a minute, were basically one was to do with the cooling fan and the other to do with is the, like the motorised flap uh, valve on the intake. So what we've done, I took the motor, the actual intake motor off the car and had a look at it. And as I found, in actual fact, so I'll show you this motor and I'll, so you can see what I'm talking about. Look at this. Because the fault code was permanent for this, a pointing towards this motor, saying no signal, I thought I'd take this off. And especially I was, I was looking at the wiring connector to see if there's any kind of problem with the wiring plug or wires or anything like that. I couldn't see nothing wrong with the wiring. But when I took this motor off, you see that like flap there, a throttle flap. I can't show you the new one because it's already on the car. 
But this flap, if I try and move it, it won't move. It's like, uh, it's absolutely seized up solid. And the new one, I could turn it. I could put my fingers in it and I could turn it. Like, and you could hear it go. And this one is just absolute. And that, that said to me, this is seized up. That's absolutely knackered. So I was confident that the new motor was gonna solve the problem. So I bolted the new one of these onto the car. By the way, before I actually carry on with that throttle flap motor, that's the crankshaft sensor that I've been swearing about. And this is literally like buried in the, in the like bell housing area. And you can't see it, or you can see the end bit, you can see the end of the plug bit, but the rest of it's like sunk in. So it's really hard to get to, and it's at an angle facing up. So you can't, you can't get your eyes in there. That, you know the only way you can see that screw is using a mirror. And you've got to get a little four, four mil Allen key and undo that. And like I said, it was so tight. I was actually, the ball joint end rounded off in that screw head and I was so lucky to get that out. Anyway, the very fact that the flap in that intake manifold flap motor was seized up, said to me that the new motor was gonna cure the problem, that was it, end of story. So like I said, I bolted it on the car. I then connected our scanner back into the diagnostic connector and I still had two codes. One was for something to do with the cooling fan, short to ground, I'll show you the code in a minute. And the other code was for that intake motor, intake flat motor uh, that I've just popped on the car. So I tried clearing it and it didn't clear. And I thought, oh, well, this is peculiar. I was getting a bit worried now. After the third attempt of like starting the car up, because I, I did look under special functions to see if there was like a reset for that intake motor flap, and there wasn't. So I, I, I presumed you would just start the car up, the easier you would sort it out and it would just work. So after starting the car up for about three times, and I tried clearing the codes, on the third attempt, the code cleared. The, uh, the, the code that was still left in there was to do with the cooling fan. And like I said, I wasn't bothered about that because I thought that was a separate issue. So I then drove the car up the road, come back, and everything was fine. And I thought that was it, end of story. Didn't think no more of it. The next morning, I came in, I didn't even start the car up, I just switched the ignition on and it went bing, and the engine light was on and it said, emissions workshop. So <laughs> I plugged the scanner back in again, and lo and behold, I had the same code. I had the cooling fan code, and I had the intake uh, motorised flap code as well. It was back, the same code. And I thought, well, that motor hasn't cured it then. What the hell? I then looked a bit further into it, and guess what I found? There's a fuse box in the engine bay by the left hand wing, and there is a 10 amp fuse just here, and straight away I could see it was blown. I didn't even have to test it, I could see through the bloody lens of the fuse that it was blown. So I went on to auto data to see what that fuse was for. Oh, and surprise, surprise, that 10 amp fuse is for the engine coolant blower motor, control module, engine coolant thermostat, and engine management. So you can kind of gather what's going on here. That manifold flat motor has seized up. It has blown the 10 amp fuse because it's seized up. The funny thing what gets me, which I don't know, I'm not even gonna bother going into it, is that that fuse is also for your cooling fans in the control module, obviously. So it's a bit funny how it controls the fans, the fuses for the fan and for the engine management system, because obviously that fuse runs through that intake flap, intake motor flap. But anyway, I'm going to stick the scanner on, uh, clear the codes and see if they stay out this time and see what happens. Let's go. So if I go into the engine codes, do not replace components based on fault codes alone. This is what we've basically got. 12546, motor for intake manifold flap, V157, no signal, P3102. And this other one, fan one control circuit short to ground, that is absolutely permanent all the goddamn time. Anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'll clear the codes and you watch Basically, they won't go away. 
So clear them, it says code's cleared. Come on, come on, come on, go back into codes. Here we go. They're still there, permanently there. Anyhow, now that I've replaced the bloody blown fuse, if I go to clear codes, and we'll see if they've actually cleared. Woohoo! No codes whatsoever! They've all completely gone! Flipping hooray! Well that's it. Job flipping done. But this this is this is the trouble. Half the time you get a car in and you've got multiple problems going on at the same time. And that's what was going on here obviously. But it's done, I'm glad. I just thought it was a little bit interesting. So I thought I'd bring it up and just make a video of it. So, I shall now find another problem to uh, film and let you know about. So till the next time, see ya.